Hey folks, it is May. Welcome. It's good to be here talking to you. You'll notice if you remember how much money I had last month. I have spent a fair amount of money since last month. When we last spoke, I was asking you if I should buy an expensive John Deere tractor. And I really appreciate hearing from people about whether or not I should do that. Um, I talked with Rachel some more about the types of equipment that I could run with the tractor, and I talked to Eddie some more, the dealer, about the cost of some of those equipment and how often it comes up used or not. And I decided not to buy the John Deere tractor. Instead, I spent all my money on this. Holy crap, y'all! I've got a yard. I have like sheds and stuff. So I have been sort of accumulating like fertilizer and seed and honey and all kinds of stuff for the greenhouses and also to use in the equipment. So I bought a little shed to store all this stuff in. So it's not just sort of like sitting out in the weather. And I got this sort of like open sided um, roof area just to store my bigger pieces of equipment. Um, normally I would put my tractor in here, except it's over at the field right now waiting to spread some fertilizer, which is going to be our job for today. Um, and I managed to fit my truck under the overhang in this, which is my shed. So I've got a little workshop inside here. It's like closed and I can uh, take some part in here without really having to worry about getting it back together immediately. I can leave stuff partially disassembled if I need to while I'm servicing things. So yeah, I've been actually like working on my own equipment over here. It's really cool. Um, Rachel has been helping me. She came out a few times and has showed me some sort of like basic maintenance stuff that I need to do on all of my equipment. And with her help, I have serviced my um, wheel loader, which I was using to move all the sand and the early pallets, I serviced my telehandler, and I serviced my tractor. Um, so I still need to do the truck. I'll get to it. Uh, and some of the other pieces of equipment I'm going to have to do at some point. But yeah, Rachel's been coming out to help me figure out how to do this um, mechanical stuff, which is super cool. Like It makes me feel more self-sufficient to be able to do it myself here. So I really love that. And then I've got a little pressure washer now, like a real one, not just the bucket and sponge I was using. So I can actually clean my equipment, which is amazing. And I even had a fuel tank put up here because the closest gas tank is over in town near the um, or fuel station that I go to most often is over in town on the way to the dealer. There's also another one that's sort of on the way to the supermarket if I go in uh, gate number two and head toward the supermarket where I sell my stuff from the greenhouses sometimes. There's a gas station that I pass there, but basically I'm only taking my truck into town or occasionally a tractor if I need to pick up a piece of equipment. So my wheel loader wasn't really able to get gas. I put it in canisters and brought it out and nothing was getting gas unless I was going to town anyway. So I thought I really just needed a tank out here. As you can see, I had to level a massive area to get all this stuff put in. Um, I've got this very steep sort of bank now behind these buildings. It like goes all the way up to the front. Um, that costs a lot of money. I started doing it myself and realized with the wheel loader, there's no way. It was just going to take me so long. I would have been doing it for years. It would have been like a toy project. So I had to get some excavators out to come and really 
take it down quickly. And then they leveled everything for me and they put a bunch of gravel in so I can drive around without churning up a lot of mud. I'm just really, really happy with the way this turned out. I can't believe it. I kind of feel like I'm here to stay. I know there's something happened, all right? We all know that something happened out in January. And I've been sort of thinking about what I want to do about that. Do I want to stop being out here? Do I want to go back to the city? Do I want to give up on this whole lottery thing? Let them take all this equipment and land back and just sort of cut my losses. And, you know, part of me thinks that's the smart thing to do because I don't know what I'm dealing with out here. I'm sort of playing with fire. But my family would characterize me as stubborn when I was younger, and I'm not a quitter. I decided to do this thing. I bought into the whole idea that we need someone out here farming, growing more food to support the population growth in the city. Like, I truly believe that. So I can't go back and just give up because I heard scary noises in the dark one time and my dog ran off. Like, that's not, that's not going to be who I am. I'm not going to be that person. So I'm here. I'm staying. I'm setting up a permanent place here. This is it. So yeah, with that in mind, my fields are coming along really nicely. I'm going to have my first harvest in a few months when these oats are ready to go. So I'm going to get another application of fertilizer on them. So that is my job for today. So I just can't get over how, how awesome this looks. Like I did this. I am growing these things out here in this desert that looks so lifeless and empty. I've got my buildings now, I've got my little house, I've got stuff growing, like the world is changing. Like I am changing it. This is, this is really something. I have a lot of feelings about it. So yeah, I'm going to hop in here and let's get some fertilizing going. We'll see y'all on the other side of a time lapse.
Okay, that is job done. I think that means we're done with these fields until it's time to harvest. That is one of the weird things about farming. It's just sort of like a lot of you do a lot of work and then you wait. Literally sitting around waiting for things to grow. So I like having other things to keep me busy, like these greenhouses. And I really think I'm going to get some chickens when I am able to harvest that sorghum. Um, Jenny told me that chickens can be a really good source for eggs and extra income. And since my goal is to help feed the city, uh, I'm going to have more food happening. Maybe someday I'll even get cows. I don't know. We'll see. So you might have noticed as I was driving up, um, there's one thing I didn't mention. With all this leveling of this area to make room for my new equipment, there's this sort of like higher raised area now because it was very hilly. And I've got all of my stuff for my tractor trailer stored up here. So my tipper trailer, my um, liquid tanker, and this large trailer that may or may not have been a mistake. Um, this is technically not my property. Like you can sort of see where I cleared the sand to the edge of my property, right here where these buildings go. This is not my property. Um, I spoke with the owner of this property and they're fine with me storing it up here for now. It's not a problem. I'm not really impeding their use of this property. And as I've been sort of moving stuff up and down from here, I realized this is another like really large open area. So I'm very tempted to say, I wanna buy this next and try to put a field up here. I haven't asked them if they're willing to sell or how much it's going to cost. So I don't know, we'll find out. I don't have the money right now. I still need to get a harvester. I would like to have a seeder. <laughs> There's always more equipment, y'all. And also a silo to store grain in to feed my chickens, which I'm going to have to have some sort of chicken coop put up. But every time I'm working in my field, I see this big empty desert area between me and the city and you see in the city it's so green and verdant and every time I drive in there it's just amazing I kind of want to transform this into that so someday I want to buy all that land between me and the city and get fields going over there and if not me, then I want to help other farmers do it too. If I'm out here to show people that it's safe to come out here and start using this land, I want to do it. I want people to do it. I hate looking at Old Town. It doesn't... Uh, it's the one thing. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. So these buildings, I wasn't sure what to put up to store stuff over here. Uh, there were a few options I was considering, but... I mentioned this person named Knox who was looking after... Hi, buddy! Hey, Phoenix! How are you doing, pal? Phoenix! What a good boy! Um, I mentioned Knox, who works over at the oil refinery, who was looking after Phoenix when he got spooked and sort of ran off. And uh, I told Kate, my sponsor over at the Board of Agriculture, that I really wanted to thank Knox for looking after Phoenix. Um, they had sort of dropped Phoenix off while I was in town, and Kate put us in touch because not Knox had spoken to her, and so we've been sort of hanging out now and again. Hey, Phoenix. And Phoenix loves them, and it turns out, I guess I'm not surprised. Hey, buddy. Yeah, because I had Phoenix, I got Phoenix in like November, middle of November around my birthday, and he went missing at the end of January. So I had Phoenix for like six weeks before he went missing. And then Knox brought Phoenix back in like March. So Knox had Phoenix almost as long as I did. So kind of like Phoenix is both of our dog, weirdly. Um, so Phoenix is always super psyched when Knox comes around. Anyway, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, I was trying to tell you that Knox in the oil refinery works in the facilities management department. And a lot of the stuff that Knox does is managing the buildings and the equipment in the buildings. So Knox has a lot of contacts and 
has a lot of ideas about what types of structures work well out here in the frontier with the sort of intense sun we get and the desert and sand and everything and helped me find some good deals on this equipment the the buildings um this shed is actually used and has been moved out here and these sort of little quickie put up metal sheds with all the girders and things um nox came over here and helped me like put these up ourselves once we got the site prep done so that was awesome uh, it's really great to have somebody who's so nearby who likes to come over and hang out and visit Phoenix and who's willing to help me with random building stuff. I just, it's ridiculous. I, I didn't know before I moved out here how little I knew. I kind of knew. Like in the city, everything is taken care of for you. I lived in this apartment. I didn't have to worry about the building. I didn't have to worry about where I was going to go find food. Like, there's all these restaurants and places to shop and places that will deliver things for you. And that doesn't really exist out here. You have to sort of be really self-sufficient. And didn't understand what that meant. But since I moved out here, I have just been building so many relationships with so many new people. Like Rachel, my mechanic, who's helping me figure out how to do all this service stuff. And she's a lot of fun, by the way, um, when she's been out here to hang out. Um, Knox, who works over at the oil refinery, and who's been helping me with this building stuff, and Phoenix. Leo, the pilot, who I don't talk to as much these days. It's been a little awkward since he asked me out, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, Jenny over at the farmer's market, who I've been talking to about like expansion opportunities. It's not just chickens, y'all. One of these days, I might get... I don't know. I might put up some factories where I can produce food myself. Like maybe I can take the oats that I harvest and turn them into breakfast cereal or like flour or something. I don't know. It's kind of like this whole new world is opening up. And the more it expands, the more interesting people I get to know. It's just, it is amazing. It is not not what I expected when I moved out here. I gotta tell you. It's so cool to see my sorghum going. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, I guess I'm just sort of waiting around for the rest of this month. I'll probably take care of my greenhouses. I think I need to top some things up. And um, maybe I'll get a hold of Paul over at the Department of Public Works and see if there is some other work I can do for him. Maybe next month, because I don't have anything to do. I'm just waiting for stuff to grow. Maybe next month I can get some work for him, or maybe a contract. Maybe I can call Estelle over at Ravenwood, see if they've got anything to do. I might need to sell stuff again soon. I don't know. These things are going okay, but... These carrots are growing so fast. I'm just running out of space for them. I don't know. I guess I need to figure it out, but... I've got my yard. It's just... The last couple months, everything feels so much more real than when I moved out here into a tent. <laughs> now I've got this house. I got my bees, I got my fields going, I've got my equipment and my sheds. Like this is it. I'm I'm actually doing this. I'm actually a farmer. This is wild. Okay. Alright, enough talking. Uh yeah, let's kinda see what sort of fun stuff I can get up into next month. See you soon. Ta ta for now. So uh I wasn't planning to record any more video this month, but I was over here at the bowling alley. Um, Rachel and I have been hanging out and I was showing her these um, arcade machines back here because I was wondering if we could maybe get these from the bowling alley and fix them up, or at least one of them. I was kind of thinking about this one. Um, the other two have these broken screens. I'm just not sure, although they're kind of farming themed, so I'm tempted. Anyway, um, I want to fix 
one or more of these up for Ginny because she is a big gamer and I think she would love these. Uh, so I was showing them to Rachel and trying to see if we could, if she un like knew enough about this to figure out if we could figure uh, how to fix them. And I saw this, which I showed you um, a similar bit of graffiti that I found a few months ago when I was cleaning things up for the Department of Public Works when I was doing that trash pickup. Aliens exist. One am in the old town. So I pointed this out to Rachel and I feel like an idiot now. Rachel looked at this and was like, one am, what are you talking about? That says one am. One am in the old town. So, uh, that's a time. Are aliens roaming overnight in Old Town? Is that what I heard? It was definitely not 1 a.m. when I was freaked out and Phoenix ran off and I ended up coming into the city. It was, I don't know, 10 or 11 o'clock at night? I think it was close to midnight when I actually got into the city gates and they admitted me and told me that there was an active alert happening. Um, should I stay up until 1 a.m. and see if something happens? I mean, that would be stupid, right? If this is real, if there are aliens roaming around overnight, that thing sounded honking scary. I would be an idiot to, like, go looking for this. But I live out there. Maybe I ought to know. I don't know. What should I do? 1 a.m. I'm going to have to think about that one. Oh, look. Frontier security. 